on tonight's show. We have actress and entrepreneur, Nicole Crumb. And now for your host, Cool Park. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, everybody. Kicking it with Cool Car, episode 88, y'all. We stacking these numbers up, about to hit 100. And I'm going to have something special planned for 100, for episode 100. So thank you guys for tuning in each and every week. If you catch it live, you catch it on the replay, it's all good. You're catching it. It's all love. Thank you so much for your presence. I appreciate that. But listen, tonight, tonight, tonight. Hey, uh, I want to say this. If this is your first time tuning in, I want to invite you to subscribe. I don't press anybody to subscribe. You know I never do that. I don't really campaign. But if it is your first time, I do invite you to subscribe so I can continue bringing you the value that my wonderful guest provide on this show. I bring some awesome people on here from all walks of life, all genres of music. Uh, just all types of different professions, man, and they drop gems. They tell you about their journey, something that you can take and put in your tool belt and go off into the world and be great, all right? So I do this for you, can't do it without you, all right? So listen, thank you guys for tuning in once again. But listen, tonight, I got an actress, I got an entrepreneur. Man, she's dope, fashionista, I'm telling you, dope sense of style. She's a great actress, she's budding, she's booking, she's doing all types of things, and she's doing it the right way, all right? She goes by the name of Nicole Crump, and we're about to get it popping, y'all. I'm telling you, it's going to be a fun one. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one. So I'm going to bring her on in with a nice warm welcome with the cool intros that I like to introduce my guests with, and we'll get to talking. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Miss Nicole Crump. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, no doubt. You know, I'm just making my rounds for all the good, wonderful people that I know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm excited, man. I'm excited to be here. Yes, yes. I'm excited to have you. We're going to talk some acting. We're going to talk fashion. We're going to talk the fedoras behind you. Oh, man. Those are dope. Those are dope, man. I'm Thank telling you. you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you again. I love your sense of style. So, yeah, you're doing something great with that. You're on to something. <laughs> oh, thank you, man. <laughs> yes, you're on to something. So, before we start, sometimes I get to talking and I'm running my mouth and I double back. But before we start, I like to start all of my shows off with a prayer. Are you okay with that? Yes. Let's get a man his I... just do. <laughs> All right, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for allowing us to be here. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, to just allowing us to have this platform to come on here and have a great conversation, real talk about real life, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just be genuine and transparent, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for just all the mercy that you have shown us, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for just giving us life each and every day and each and every way, giving us family, giving us love, giving us a roof over our head and food to eat, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Just all the simple and essential things, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just thank you. We thank you for the little things. We thank you for the small gains. We thank you for the big gains. We thank you for the setbacks, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, for their learning blocks. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. We just give you all the love, all the, play, all the praise, all the glory, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. In your name, amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. Come on, prayer. Yes. Hey. Come on, prayer. Got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, fuck him. Come on. 
yes, indeed. You gotta set the mood right, huh? Never seen. I love it. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. I had a guest on here named Hollywood. Goddamn. <laughs> That's his name, Hollywood Al. Um, he's on a reality show. He's like, man, he's a great dude. But he came on here and was like, oh no, uh, uh-uh. before we start this, we gotta pray. And I was like, man, I pray every day, all day. And why the hell I ain't think to come on here and get this man his just due for blessing me for this? We know me with this platform. I'm like, wow. I'm like, brother, I gotta take that from you, man. I gotta, I gotta open my show with a prayer. Ever since then faithfully yeah it, it only makes sense you know yeah. it only makes sense because my relationship is there not like i i don't have a relationship you know yeah. i'm praying every day all day my relationship is strong so i'm like wow why in that you know but god sends people in your life for reasons like that though you know you know so and it- yeah yeah and then i get wonderful people in here like you to share it with and then it does yeah. something for all of us you know what i'm saying yeah listen Firing. That's yeah. Firing. Listen, I, cause I, 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 Lord, tell you, I, I skip a prayer now. I will. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I needed that. Look, I ain't prayed since last week. <laughs> I just needed that today. <laughs> oh man, well, see, for a reason, for a reason. Now maybe it will instill something in you to pray tonight, pray tomorrow morning, pray right, during the right, day. Right. I'm saying I pray every day, all day. Like it just, it just hits me, and I get to praying. You know, I don't even need nothing. I don't want nothing. I just give yeah. Miss Just Do. You know, yeah. Cause I'm here. You know, cause I'm here, man. I woke up, woke up, and got one more shot. At least one more shot. That's, real. That's how I look at it. At least one more shot, man. To make it right, get it right, change it, change your ways, yeah. learn how to love. Hell, if it's only for another day. That's true. You know, man. That's motivation, though. That's motivation for real. That's that. I used to pray every day. You get girl. Day. You gotta get back to it. What man. happened? What happened? Let's talk about it. What happened to you? That if, if it, listen, if it's too personal, you ain't gotta say nothing. But if you can expound on that, cause somebody needs to hear this. What happened to you that made you kind of not even stray away, but sometimes you just you be, you be so tired that you for you you get out of your regimen and it's just like it's so easy to lay it down and leave it there. And just go on about your business. So if you can expound or if you care to expound, what happened? And we'll we'll get into other stuff. But right now we on to something. Talk yeah. talk to me. I think I used to do it. So I mean I grew up in church. I grew up, you know, every day. I mean that was that was just life. Monday through Sunday, you know, in church and you know, I, I grew up um knowing who God was and, 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 and things like that. And sometimes I think I know I shy away from it. Because I know the calling that God has on my life, like mm-hmm. I know what that is, and sometimes you know I try to I, I try to negate from what God is really saying spiritually for me. You know, mm. what I'm saying? And, you and running I, from I'm, it? I'm kind of, you know, I, I'm I'm not on the fence. I'm not saying I'm on the fence with just religion, and I'm more spiritual than bingo. Religion. Bingo. Religious. Bingo. I I, yeah, I think I think religion has torn and 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 just kind of you know ran rampant here in people's lives. You know, yeah. just religion. You know, and, and and being spiritual that's something totally different. Is it, and people some people don't understand that. You know. So can so I you, say something real quick? Can I say something I, real quick? And I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just want to say something that, I, that that's put on my spirit to tell you right now. The reason you set it down is because you were conflicted with religion and spirituality. But now that you know the difference, you got to let that go and have that personal relationship with that man, whether you go to some worship house or not, because I don't go to the worship house no more. And the only reason that I'll probably go back to a worship house is for my kids, just to instill that in them. And then once they get it solid, let them take that and grow with it, with them, with it within themselves, and then right. they can have a decision with you know as they get older if they want to continue to go to the church house. But for me, I don't go to the church house no more. Yeah. It's a personal spiritual relationship, and it's solid. And and because you know what, just like with social media, celebrity, and all that, I feel like the church has gotten too commercialized. And, and these people are glorifying these these mega church pastors. And there's some good ones out there still. You know, don't get me wrong. 
But that whole experience, that's not what I envisioned for myself. And I and I've talked to God deeply about it because I felt some type of way, too. And I was conflicted, you know, but God showed me like, yeah, you don't have to do that. Right. Just know me. Yeah, I've been baptized a couple times. You know, I, I grew up Baptist. And I'm I, we, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we're going to get back no, to what you were good. saying. But I'm just expounding on that because I feel like that's what it is for you. You probably set it down because you grew up in church. You probably even felt a little ashamed for the fact that, you know what, you were feeling that way about church because it's like, man, I'm kind of torn. That's not what I was taught. That's not what was instilled in me. Yeah. But I don't want to go that route. But now yeah. that you know spirituality... Man, just get with God, have that firm foundation and relationship with God. Yeah. All that, all that, all that feeling that you had, like even feeling, because I know I kind of felt ashamed. I'm like, dang, I grew up in a church, yeah. you know, yeah. all that'll go out the window because you, yeah. you got this relationship with God. Yeah. You've been to church. You got all the values and the core stuff. Yeah. Man, just have that relationship with God. And I promise you that that praying, it'll, you won't even think about it no more. You're yeah. going to give him his glory. You're going to give him the praise. Yeah. Without even thinking about it. You're right. And it's like, I, I, I did feel the same. Um, and a lot of people don't even know this about me. But I was actually um, praise and worship leader, choir director, all of that good stuff, you know. Mm. And I saw so much, you know. And honestly, when I when I decided to kind of shell off from the church, I mean, meaning the actual building, I was two months shy of being a licensed minister. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I'm out. I'm out. Like, I saw so much, man. I was yeah. I was being offered, like, all kind of stuff, like cars and houses and things from, like, wow. pastors that, that yeah. were like, like, bro, you my overseer. Like, why <laughs> are you offering me this? Like, first lady knows, do she know this shit? Like, you know? Yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, but <laughs> you right. I you know, getting back into it and, and, and building a relationship. I can't say that I, I, I was joking, but I, I do pray uh at least I, not as often as I should, but um I do I do have my conversations with God. You know what I'm okay. saying? And I, I do talk to him just how I'm talking to you like I'm yeah, or, That's how um, you should. What you know, what what is it, you know, or what do I need to do? Um, yeah. But even just giving them thanks, man, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it, but I thank God for the the knowledge and the wisdom um, to get an experience of who he is. Yeah. You saying versus what man has told me who he is, but yeah. given, given that personal experience and, you know, of what God is, I'm grateful for him. So I appreciate the prayer. I appreciate that um, enlightenment. Of, of, of how you opened your show because that just showed me that I, I need to get in my prayer closet. Man, hey, I, this 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 interview was meant to be and it was more than what it was supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, it, what what we said it was supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah. It. That's good. That's good, man. See, it's like for me, and we're going to move on with the show, but I just want to say this. For me, um, you know, God showed me a long time ago, like, man, I, you got to be the example, you know, set the example wherever you go, be the light wherever you go and show people what God really looks like. It's not about a race or a color. It's just about showing love. You know what I'm saying? Just being genuine, helping people, man, just gracious. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it's about. That's what God looks like. Yeah. You know, Th that's what God looks like. It's the actions. It's the doings. You know, it's the teachings, like it's just the love that you pour out on somebody else that you don't even know. Show them what God looks like. That's what God looks like. It ain't about no skin color or black, white. Like that's all that religion stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. just be the light, girl. Pray, man. <laughs> just pray. <laughs> yeah. For real. Just play. But God got you. God got you. Oh yeah, for sure. For God sure. got you. Indeed. <laughs> So here, here's probably going to be the hardest question of the night for you. Okay. Why acting? Oh, man. Why acting? Why acting? acting? It's been my passion since I was a kid. Like, literally, like, since I can remember five, mm -hmm. being five years old. I'm going to tell you why it's, it's, it's my passion. And I kind of tell, I touch on it, you know, in some interviews that I do. 
Um, but this is more so a conversation. So we just gonna have a conversation. Of course. Um, acting. I grew up in somewhat of a poverty-stricken household. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of anything. Um, I was a victim of sexual abuse. And um, television kind of got me out of that mindset mm-hmm. of, of just hurt, torment, yeah. um, of what I was going through. And so watching television, you know, for me, it was, it was to get out. It was to take my mind away from the daily, you know, yeah. abuse that I was dealing with. And it was, it was not just sexual, but it was verbal. Mm-hmm. It was physical. You know, it was all of that um, from age five to eleven by uh, my mom's boyfriend. Okay. Wow. You know, so watching TV, I was watching, you know, the Cosby Show, and I was, you know, watching the cast on there and how I felt when I watched the show, and I, you know, how they made me feel. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew then. I, you know, I was talking to God as a kid, and I was like, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to make somebody feel like that. You know. Yeah. And from then, I was a shy kid. I was timid. I was. Uh, uh, I didn't speak much as a kid. You know, a lot of people don't know that I talk. I talk my tail off now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but as a kid, I was silenced. You know, by the hurt and the trauma. Yeah. And so, um, I didn't speak. For a, a while, and when I when I say that, it's people that I didn't know, you know, my family, of course. But like, if I didn't know you, you know, I I'm deaf mute. Yeah. I'm not nothing, you know. Um, but I dealt with that. But watching television and watching shows and a different world and The Simpsons and The Jetsons mm-hmm. and you know watching all of those you know, cartoons, um, Woody Woodpecker and I mean just a whole bunch. Of, I knew I wanted to be in the industry of filmmaking and, and, and animation. And so that's kind of where I, you know, kind of got my drive from. And once I got a little bit older, I said, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. I'm going to pursue it. And yeah. I did it. Yeah. Man, I can relate so much, you know, and I'm sorry to hear about the abuse part. Like, that's that's just crazy. So I understand, like, television took you to another world. It took you to your own yeah. world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah, it, and it was the same for me. Like television just took me away from everything, you know. I, I, you know, I didn't experience abuse or anything like that. But that's just how I was as a kid. Like I would get in that TV, and you know, the your parents are like, "Boy, get your out that TV, this and that, and the third. But I'm like, it just did something for me. Like it was, it was magical for me. And I always lived in my head anyway. And I was such a like I saw colors, and I still see colors mm-hmm. to this day. But as a kid, I, it's like I had a colorful mind like really saw colors and it was like creative colors and I really couldn't understand it, but I knew that it was just, I, I knew something was different for me than other kids, you know? And from an early age, you know, I was doing, you know, stage plays in like yeah. third, fourth grade maybe, I think it was, I started doing that. Third, mm-hmm. fourth, or fifth, I don't know when it was, but anyway, I just I just knew that. And I was like very um, elaborative and um, flamboyant when it came to like, just playing and and pretending and like yeah. really living in that moment, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like really living in a moment and believing it. So yeah. I was like, yeah, man, this is this is this is what I want to do. You know, this is what this is who I am, and not what I want to do. This is who I am. So I get it. I understand that. So yeah, that's dope, man. Yeah. That's dope. What age did you realize though that you had that niche for it though? Like, uh. I think, like, honestly, I can remember back when I didn't even, when I wasn't even on stage, I was just in front of my class, and I was like, this is what I want to do, yeah. you know, and, and at that time, maybe that was like the third grade, maybe, okay. I, I, it was like, yo, this is what I want to do, is how can I do this, you know, you don't know much about theater and, and whatever, but you see television, you're just like, how can I do this? This is what I want to do. But really, like when it started clicking for me, really was um, because it's like it's crazy because I was acting as a young kid, right? Mm-hmm. And then I got into music, and I started thinking I wanted to do music. And then eventually, I did get into music, and I, excuse me, I, I set the acting down a little bit, 
but then I, I minored in theater in college and um I think that's when like it really snapped or, or clicked to me like man you need to stop playing and like yeah. really go for this because it kind of it actually like reminded me of how I felt when I was a kid doing it you know what I'm saying because you know things happen you're living your life you got new experiences sometimes you can lose that magical feeling it's yeah. still there but yeah man once I started doing those plays and stuff like that in college like that's when it really like hit me like man I gotta get an agent I gotta get an acting class mm -hmm. like I really gotta do this so yeah I think it was then really that's what's up yeah that's so, what's up but yeah, it's just a magical place for me, man. It's like, there's no... I tell people this all the time. like, And I'm pretty sure you can relate because you, you're booking. <laughs> I haven't booked in a while, right? So I am I know you can relate, but... Like, okay, this is cool. This is cool that you're saying that you're talking about this, right? Because you're talking about you looking at TV and it's taking you to another place, right? Take you, takes you to a different world. Doesn't set feel like that to you? Yeah. Right? When you yeah. step on set, it's almost like you step, you're like you warp into. Man. Listen. It right? Does. It does. It does. Like when you're on set, it just feels totally different. It's magical. It's like nothing else exists. It's almost like you've walked into another realm. And as soon as they say, okay, you're wrapped, reality sets in when you step off that set, right? Yeah. And, and you feel like, yo, I just had the experience of a lifetime. Like you never done it before. And right. it's like the, you know, however many times you book and been on set. But each and every time for me, I promise you, when I walk off that set, it's like it was the first time I've been there. Because yeah. it just, it's like a different world. It's it's magical. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, I know for me, like when when I book and I'm, I'm going to set like that day, I'm not I'm really not a morning person. And you know a lot of sets, you know, you gotta be on set. Early. You know, early, you know, six o'clock AM, sometimes it's five. I be it's like I don't sleep. It's like I'm up. Yep. I'm like, I'm anticipating. I'm yep. like, okay, I get to be on set today. I get to do yeah. what I love, yeah. my, my passion, what I'm dreaming <laughs> I'm about. I'm telling so, you. Man, it's it's an amazing feeling where it, like, listen, it so is. Isn't that energy so dense? When you Man. wake up that day and you're getting ready and you driving a set, like isn't the energy just thick? Yeah. Like is I'm telling you, like it's a it's a totally mm -hmm. man. I agree. I, I can't even explain it, you know, fully. Like, but it's like uh, you you understand. It's it's I just know. man. I, I remember um because I, I worked in property management as well. Me too. So, um, <laughs> really? Yep. Oh, snap. <laughs> comment. <laughs> got a lot of comments. Yep. Man, I got back to work, like, the next day after filming on this set for, like, a week. And I'm like, I'm back here. It's like I'm back in hell again. I'm like, okay, yep. God, listen, I yeah. can't do Like, I got I to gotta be consistent with it. I got to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's 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 definitely a reality check once you once they rap and yell wrong tone and then you get to get back to your trailer, you get in your stuff, you like Yeah. It's so like the only thing that I can relate it to, and it's not even close, is like going on a long vacation, you know, and then coming back. Excuse yeah. me. You know, especially if you like, you know, if you go out the country or just somewhere distant that's like totally different from where you are. Like the whole terrain, tropical, whatever, and then coming back to the states and it's just like, eh, dang. Yeah. But it's it's not even close though. But that's the only thing I can relate. Like if I wanted right. to like tell somebody, like imagine this. But it's man, yeah, it's just totally like wow. You're right. But I'm glad you feel that way because I, I saw how you lit up when I said that. You were like yeah, because it's so true. Like when you're on set, it's magical. It is. It's it magical. It's a whole experience. And each set is different. And, you know, it's yeah. just a different experience. But I love it. Yeah, man. I love it. I got to get back. <laughs> I gotta get, you do. You I gotta, do. I got to get back to set. I just got to get on my stuff, man. I know what I got to do. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 Like I said, we were talking before. I'm a person. I'm real with myself. I'm going to be real with you. Like, 
I can't even sit up here and be like, man, I don't know why I'm not booking this and that and the third. I'm doing this. I'm doing, man, I ain't doing enough right now. And I know that. And it's for a reason, you know, like it's yeah. on purpose. And I know that, but I know I got to give back too, because that's my passion. But yeah. yeah, man, but this is my passion too. So I'm, you know, I'm juggling, but hey, it is what it is. But yeah, man, set. You killing it. You killing it though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. So, what do you do when you aren't booking? How is how how do you deal with it mentally? Like, is it easy for you? Because some people say it's hard for them. Some people start getting down on themselves. Some people start thinking it's them. But you, I'll let you talk, and then I'll tell you my take on that. Yeah. So I, I went out to dinner last night with uh, this amazing actress. Um, she's here from. She was here filming something. Mm -hmm. She's um. Out of um, out of LA, and we were talking about just the stagnated stage as an artist mm -hmm. when you're not booking. Yeah. You know, and it's funny because this young lady is on a lot of stuff. Like she was, <laughs> she's really a child. She was a childhood star. Okay. Now you know she's you know a star now, mm -hmm. and even to hear her say. You know, Nicole, hey, you know, when I when I don't book, you know, I feel like this and I feel like that and I feel like I'm not good enough. You know, I think we all as humans kind of yeah. feel that way. Um, I know I've had some 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 opportunities to audition and come this close to getting a role. I'm gonna tell you, I, I about two years ago I auditioned for a show on Showtime. Right? Mm -hmm. And I didn't fit the description. I d I didn't, but the casting director say, hey, I want you to audition. It ended up being myself and the young lady who actually got the role. Wow. And I was I was devastated because I was on hold and she was like, no, they, mm -hmm. they you know, they're considering <laughs> you for this role, blase, blase. And it was with Ethan Hawk. Actually, it was Good Lord Bird. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Great piece with Ethan Hawk. And I was just, I was, when I didn't get it, I was devastated. But I had to sit back and I was talking to Dave Jure Ashley mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, he was like, but you got, you got neck and neck with getting it. So you can't put yourself down like that. And honestly, it was a, the, the role called for a 60 year old slender woman. Oh, wow. So neck and neck with this lady and I'm 30 thick. Right. I was like, all right. Yeah. Back and things, I, I, I'm grateful because I did. I officially did get in for the directors, and you know everybody saw it. So it's a gut punch when you don't get it, but at the same time, I feel like what God has for me is for me. Yeah. If, if I don't book some, that was somebody else's blessing. You know exactly. What I'm That's kind of what I look at. It. And and look at it this way too. And this is how I had to learn to look at things too. It's like you booked that though. Mm -hmm. Right, you booked it. Cause if you got if you got to the final two, you booked it. It was yeah. their choice. It was something mm -hmm. that they wanted. It wasn't about you anymore. You did the work. You beat out how many hundreds hundreds of people? It was a it was a huge film, so it was hundreds of people. You booked yeah. it. It was just what they wanted, right? It was what they yeah. wanted. You didn't you didn't check a couple boxes of their checklist. Not what not not what. They brought you in there for, which was the talent. You booked it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So that's what you gotta understand, and that's what you gotta know. And then you can feel good about it, like you know what? I, I booked that. It just, yeah. it's, they just went a different way, you yeah. know. That's how you gotta wow. look at it. Cause listen, man, I don't want to date myself, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was up for the role, the black kid in Finding Forrester. I don't even remember the kid's name anymore. He's a man, of course. I'm a man. Uh -huh. um, you remember that Sean Connery? He was teaching the, yeah. the black kid how to whatever read or write, or write or whatever. It was me, him, and another guy. And I auditioned for that movie like six times. Call me back six times. And I got down to the final three. Me, him, and this other guy. And you know what? I booked the role. Mm -hmm. I booked the role. Just how I was telling you. I booked that role. You know why? Because it came down to... Them bringing Sean Connery into the um into the office or studio or wherever he was at, and he watched the tapes, 
and they and because he wants to know he he wants to choose the person that he's going to mm-hmm. be working with he wants to know he wants to choose who he feels he has the best chemistry with and he picked that guy gotcha. so i booked the role gotcha. he just came in and felt that he would have more he would have better chemistry with that kid yeah so I felt like, you know, I, like you said, it was a gut punch. I was devastated. I was like, man, six times, man, I'm down to the wire and I don't get it. But when I found out that's how the process went, I was like, all right, I could live with that. Yeah. I could live with that. You know what I'm saying? And don't, though, you ever, you ever, you ever think about the what ifs? Yeah. I'm like, damn, man, my, it would have been a whole different trajectory of my life, you know? Yeah. But it's all good. Here I am. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Still doing like here I am, still doing it, and I almost booked something over. Um, I, I auditioned for um, what is it? Bad Dad Rehab or Rehab or it's with okay. um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It came. I think that it went straight to TV this time. No, the second. Uh, yeah, I think it was with uh, Malik Yoba. He's like yeah. a therapist, right? I almost booked that, man. They had me on hold, had me on hold, had me on hold. They kept checking on me through COVID, kept emailing me. Are you still available? Hell yeah, I'm still available. <laughs> Shit, it's COVID. Hell yeah, I'm still available. Kept sending me emails, kept sending me emails, and then I just never heard anything, and then here's the movie coming out. So I'm like, damn. Okay, all right. That's all, it's all good, though. But I And it's crazy because I felt damn good about that audition. Like, I did some off-the-wall different stuff that I know that nobody probably did in the audition and i felt yeah. really good about it like i you know you, you know you could do some off the wall stuff and it just don't make sense for the script <laughs> right mm-hmm. you're just trying shit but this i i made a good choice it was completely different from what they wanted but it was a damn good choice and it went with the script though and i was just like man i think i got a good shot and then lo and behold they, they hit me back and kept hitting me back and then COVID. and i was like damn and then i thought like it was it was, it was gonna scrap you know i thought they were just gonna scrap they kept emailing me through COVID. I'm just like, all right, well, I guess I'm still in the running, you know? And yeah. then crickets, and then it comes out. I was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. It happens, yeah. man. It yeah. happens. Yeah. yeah. But like I told you, man, like we were talking before, I'm good with it. You know, I'm really good with it. Um, I think just as I've gotten older, because I, when I lived in New York, I lived in New York when I did the the uh, Finding Forrester thing, right? And I was a I was a wreck after every audition. Oh my God, I should have did this better. I should I could have done this. Did I do this? Did I do this choice? Like I was crazy, right? And I I was like, yo, I'm killing myself. So yeah. as I gotten older, I just don't give a fuck no more. You know, it's like I'm gonna do the work. I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna lay it down. I'm not gonna hand you shit. You know, I'm yeah. not going to misrepresent myself. I'm not going to hand you shit. I know I can do what I can do, and you know it too. That's why you call me in here. So I'm going to give you what you asked for and, and a little bit more or whatever. And if I don't book it, then it, it wasn't on me. You know, it wasn't on me. That's how I look at it. I'm just like, you know, I'll move on to the next, and I'll go back to do my show. And then I'll yeah. be, I, like like I like to say, like Deja always say, let them interrupt you. I let them interrupt me. You know? I'm like, oh, yeah. shit, I got this audition. Okay, let me, let me go handle that. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's my take on it and that's how i keep myself sane man because it'll drive you crazy i talk to so many actors they just be like man i'm not booking like if i t- like i honestly when i get auditions i don't even like to talk about it i don't tell nobody because you know you might be talking to an actor who hasn't auditioned since last shit january in 2020 yeah. you know what i'm saying and they be like man well lucky you because i have an audition like i don't even like to say anything because there's people out there that's less fortunate you know right. and it's like damn all right <laughs> so right. you got to look at that at least we're getting the opportunity to get into the room or in front of the camera and present ourselves some people aren't getting anything now we don't know their work ethic and we don't know their talent level either but at the end of the day we're still blessed with that opportunity and that's all we can ask for is that opportunity you know that's true so that's true yeah so yeah man it's a it's it's a grind it's a grind i know you know it is i was talking to dejour one day i um i got to 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 his his spot to do the Mm self-tape and he like what we auditioning for the day i'm like i'm telling i'm like man this this casting director done audition me like seemed like 150 times (laughs) like sir like I'm, i'm getting frustrated but they was like nah that's a good thing if he calling yep. you back, he sees something. He trying to he trying to find something. He trying to find something. Yep. 
And lo and behold, like, I booked. <laughs> Finally, with that casting director, they was like, "I told you, I told you." I'm like, "Yeah, that casting director was rooting for you." Yeah, that casting director was rooting for you. I got one. I got one that's on me like that too, man. I, I know he rooting for me. I ain't booked nothing with him yet, but I'm like, man, I ain't gonna let you down, brother. I'm gonna get one yeah. in on you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm just appreciative. You keep calling my name, brother, for real. Like, yeah. <laughs> For real, for real, right. for real. That's real. Yeah, man. I remember. Um, what was her name? What was her name? Sherry or Cherry? I forget her name, but she was like the casting director for uh, The Walking Dead. Okay. I forget her name. It was a white lady, older white lady named Cherry or something like that. But she used to send for me. Oh my God! At least once a week. Man, I ain't booked nothing, man, nothing. And then it went off the air, and I'm just like, damn. But she kept, kept, kept kept calling my name i'm like damn she what? want me in there she rooting for your boy but i'm you know it is what it is yeah what wow yeah. so walking dead is, is 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 off it's done i think it is is I it walking no 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 it wasn't walking dead it was uh vampire diaries sorry vampire diaries, vampire diaries. yes it was vampire gotcha. diaries and then there was about to be a spinoff of vampire diaries i don't even know if that's on the air anymore really? but yeah she called me in for that is the cw yeah, CW, yeah. CW, okay. Yeah. Yeah, was they it. I think, didn't he do that show? He, yeah, he might have. I think he, he did. You know, he done done a couple <laughs> things, so he might have. Yeah. But yeah, man, that was cool. I, you know, I realized that. And I think I had a talk with Dejo at that time, too. And he was like, yeah, man, she's rooting for you. She keeps, you know, yeah. she keeps calling your name. So, yeah. We just yeah. got to keep keep pushing, man. But listen, let's talk about your projects that you got going right now. You got, you did Tales on BT. Season three, right? Yeah. Right? Season three. You got yeah. uh yeah, so you got that, you got Atlanta Homicide. Uh-huh. Did that air already? ATL hom homicide it aired two weeks ago. God dang it, I missed it. I gotta go <laughs> I gotta go find it. I got <laughs> they, they 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 replayed them episodes over and over. And what <laughs> what what uh what what uh network is that on? That's on TV One. TV One, Atlanta Homicide. I gotta remember that. ACL Homicide. Okay, and then yeah. Tales. Did your episode? They haven't. They haven't. No, um, it started. Hasn't yeah, the season hasn't came out yet. So I, I know. Um, they just wrapped. We just wrapped. Pretty okay. Much. So yeah. So what episode are you on? I'm on episode three. Episode three. Okay. Yes. Who did you play? What was your role? And did you work with Irv Gotti? I am playing the role of Candy. 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 God dang it. So Candy up to no good. Anybody named Candy ain't shit. <laughs> Listen, it was so funny, right? Because we were just talking about casting. And, of course, we know, everybody know George Pierre cast tales, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I told him, sure, he was like, he, 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 you know. And it was it was just like that. Just You was just talking about that, like how um, I, I did the audition and they kept calling my agent like, hey, is she available? Is she available? We're going to push the shoot dates back. Is she going to push back, push back? Uh -huh. My agent was like, are you still available? Are you? I'm like, I'm available. Just <laughs> what, what do we got? You know? <laughs> he hit me up and was like, hey, you booked. So I was like, all right, back. So Candy, so I, the role I auditioned for mm -hmm. was one of the friends and okay. the... I, I don't know how they select, but they were like, we want her for this role. <laughs> so that was, it was dope. It was a comedic, um, comedic role. And, and this uh, particular season is the first comedic season, Cortez. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. I'm kind of excited about that. But Candy definitely brought the comedic timing and um, kind of flavor to, to, to this particular episode. So I'm kind of happy about it. Um, the director for that episode is Terry J. Vaughn. We all know her oh, as Lolita from Steve Yeah, Harvey. okay. So he uh, texted me uh, probably about two days before the shoot and was like, hey, I need to talk to you, you know. And she just called me and, and just kind of reassured me that we, you know, we just going to have fun. We're going to have a blast with the scene. And we did just that. And it was just, a, it was an honor to even work with her, just growing up watching her. Yeah. All of this stuff, and then to see her be my director was was pretty dope. Oh man, that's wonderful! Wow, 
I'm pretty sure that was a magical set. <laughs> For real. It was. It was so fun, man. It was so fun. And then to just see all the uh, the actors in Atlanta who you kind of run in past. Yeah. You know, book, it, book the same show. or You know, it, it's, it's pretty dope. Yeah, I know they put out a mass booking for that, man. Because I, I got a couple of auditions for that, too. So I know, like, but, but that's good, though. You know, yeah. that's good that they're heavy on the Atlanta actors. Because I was going to talk to you about that, too. Like, you know, and we'll get into that. But it, it's like they book all the A-list. I don't want to say all A-listers. But they look, book them the main, what is it, the principal talent still from L.A., New York. And they give us the little day player yeah. whatever which is cool we got to take what we can get but we got to keep fighting we got to keep training so we can compete you know what yeah. i'm saying because you already know that la training is a different beast than what we're getting out here so we got to educate ourselves on our own time as well as go to class and so we can compete man because it's an uphill battle with that but i'm loving the fact that irv and i don't know who else he got over there working with him is giving us a shot Cause I got yeah. like three auditions for that, so yeah. I'm like, man, that's love. Cause you don't see that. Like, did you ever get any auditions for like the Fifty Cent? Uh, what is it? Uh, BMF? Did you get an audition? Did. You did? Shit, I ain't get no audition for that. Yeah, I ain't. You did. Dang. I've never gotten an audition for BMF. I've never gotten an audition for any of Tyler Perry's films. Really? Maybe that's saying something about my agent. I don't know, but we ain't gonna put that out there in the air like that. Cause it is what it is. But I'm like. I don't get those auditions. What? I don't get those. I like. I get. I get big film auditions. Don't get me wrong, but like all the the black stuff, I really don't get any auditions for it. I really don't. And I, I'm sitting up here thinking, like, yo, what the hell going on? Because I'll see, I'll see episodes of movies and stuff, and I'm like, I know I fit that. Like, why the hell I ain't go out for that? Why don't I get that shot? You know. But who knows why? You don't know why it could be an yeah. agent. It could be the casting director didn't send it to your agent. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. But anyway. That's true. I'm just saying. They, they book a lot of the principal roles from L.A. Um, but it's good yeah. that Tails is doing that, man. Because I did see a couple people that I knew also outside of yourself that yeah. booked. And I'm like, hell yeah, man. That's good stuff, you know? Yeah. So, so. do you think it's beneficial for, for, for us to like transition to L.A.? So that we could get that, or, or do you think it's situational based? Does it depend on, like you say, your agent, or you know, I your think, town? Yeah, because uh, it is relationship based, you know. Um, so it could be your agent, and if you get management, that could help you too. Because I was in a situation where I was about to have management, but I think that. I was kind of low on the totem pole coming in, and I wasn't really getting the attention. I, and I'm just not the person to sit around and wait. Not like gotcha. that, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like you. If I if I'm under that, and then you're dictating my moves, but I ain't moving, I gotta yeah. do something else. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I felt about it. I don't know. Maybe I jumped the gun on that. I I don't know. Couldn't tell you. But um, I do know managers, management companies can help you uh, get roles because they they know directors and able to like, hey give this guy a look. You know, yeah. it can come from your agent. It can come from the management. So. I think it's situational. Um, yeah. I've known a lot of people to go out to LA and fall flat, and that's not to say that it, you know, it, it can't happen that you go out there and you make it because a lot of people do. We hear the stories. Yeah. I don't know anybody personally that's gone out there and just whew, shot out, you know, and got this. Yeah. You know, like it's I don't want to. Grind. It's in LA. It's so expensive, you know. And yeah. I always tell people. Um, people, you know, they ask me, cause I, you know, I'm from Houston okay. and so out here to Atlanta, you know, people were like, why are you going out there? And I'm like, well, we don't have, you know, acting gigs or, or even the opportunity in Houston, at least back then when I, right. came. you know, I, I've been here, I've been here since 2014. So I was like, okay, I got to up and go, you know, and I was listening to Tyrese actually, um, Tyrese was like, um, I was like, Lord, all right. Am I supposed to be going? Because Tommy Ford was my acting coach before he passed. So Tommy oh, wow. came to Houston. Okay. And he was like, hey, if you're serious about this thing, I think you need to come to Atlanta. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. And I kept praying about it, though. And then I told God, I said, give me a sign. Like, am I really supposed to be up and leaving? Right. And, and I kid you not, Tyrese posted a video. 
and was like, um, hey, you know, a lot of times we waiting for the, these Hollywood roles, waiting, you know, for things to happen, and you know, it's not in your area, in the where you live in. Right. You gotta sometimes you gotta get up out of your 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 comfort zone, mm -hmm. and you gotta go get it. Yeah. And I left when I left Houston. I had I left my job, my nine to five, as an assistant property manager. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, benefits, all of that good yeah. stuff. Put all my stuff in storage, and I came to I came to Atlanta. <laughs> Man, barely making it. But when I got here, I got here. I um, booked with Tyler Perry my first week. Wow. Thought it was gonna be one episode. It ended up being four seasons, and I was like, Look Whoa. at God. Yeah. So I was like, All right, I, I hear you, God. I hear you. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tell anybody, man, it's it's a grind, but if you know it, you know you you know your passion and your yeah. goals, and you know what God has ordained for your life, and you gotta follow it. You gotta follow it, absolutely, without any doubt, any ifs, ands, buts. You just gotta follow it, and you gotta make a way. You just gotta figure yeah. it out. Like you yeah. said, you up and left your job back in 2014. I think I up and left my my yeah when I did property management. Yeah, I left my job and I just jumped, man. I took a leap and. You know, I was doing my thing for about four or five years, and then I hopped back into a nine to five for a reason, though. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it was part of my plan to get certain things, and yeah. I know, I like, I, it, yeah, I make it work for me. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah. I'll be the I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm not ashamed to tell you. Yeah, I went back to work after being like doing my entrepreneurial thing for four years, but it was for a reason. It's for a purpose. Yeah. It's part of my plan. I ain't staying there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to hop in, get what I need to get, get what I need to get, and get out. But, um, yes. yeah, it's a grind. It's definitely mm -hmm. a grind. And you just got to stick with it. You got to believe in it. And you can go to 200 auditions and not get shit. And it could be 201. Mm -hmm. And it pops mm -hmm. for you. And it, it, it weighs on you. Don't get me wrong. Like, even yeah. me with the thick skin and I don't care. Like, it weighs on you because you're like, damn, mm -hmm. I want to work. You know, mm -hmm. but I don't let it get to my mental like, oh, am I good enough? Am I not good enough? Nah, I don't I don't go there no more. That's that's done. You know, I'm comfortable with who I am. I know I'm, if I'm going to give you something, it's going to be of quality. And if it wasn't right for your project or right for you or whatever, then it is what it is. But at the end of the day, as an actor and having a passion for the art, you want to work. So it does weigh on you like, shit, man, I want a book at least. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but you just got to keep getting it, you know, got to keep going. That's it. So let's talk about um, what you got. She's sexy. I got a clip. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. Talk us into this clip and we're going to play the clip. It's the little trailer for it, but talk us into it. It is on Tubi, right? It's on Tubi. It's yeah. on Tubi. So y'all can go watch it right now. She sexy. Nicole Crump is in the movie. Y'all check it out. Show that love. Put in your favorites and stream it a million times. But set it yeah. up and we're going to go to the uh, to the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> She's sexy. I, I play the role of Liddy. And Liddy is the logical one out of this group of friends. She's trying to talk her friend out of, you know, getting into some craziness. So Liddy, you know, I, I, I like Liddy because she's definitely different from any role that I've been able to, been I had the opportunity to portray. So Okay. Yeah. So Liddy yeah. made you flex your muscle a little bit. Stretch it. Yeah. I was like, she's a nice girl. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right, cool. Let's jump into this clip real quick and let them see what it's all about. And then maybe they'll go check it out on Tubi. Yeah. She's sexy, y'all. Let's get it. What are you doing? Oh my god, I like it. Oh my god, I was trying to attack you on the stairwell, but I stopped. So what did he look like? He was he was memorable. And he's a writer. He writes romance novels. He wants me to be his muse. You barely know him. Stand out she the radio looking at a beautiful woman. Like on <laughs> the only thing left is destruction. Use. <laughs> you barely know this 
<laughs> right? Oh, man. That's what's up, though. That's what's up. That's a good look. Hey, y'all, make sure you check it out. It's on Tubi right now. I got to check it out myself. I brought it up today, actually, but I didn't watch it yet. But I'm going to okay. check you out. I'm going to go show that love and support for sure. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, man. So, um, you did another one. It, it's not out, right? It's what, Heart and Soul? Something like that? I heard, my Heart and Soul is not out yet. Yeah. Talk, talk, yet. talk about that. You got to come on. Promote it, girl. Yeah. Promote it. <laughs> my Heart and Soul, hey, we filmed that here in, in Atlanta in the West End. And it is just like so real to me. Like, you ever felt like I, I know how I felt back when I when I used to watch like a different world mm -hmm. and like you know all those the night the 90s shows and the 90s movies that really supported like black love and you know things like that man that's what my heart and soul reminds me of it's 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 nostalgic it's just it's earthy it's man it's just black excellence in it man and the cast is just amazing from the poetry to the the, the designs to the set designs to where we shot it's an amazing film the writer director man it's it's the old new hollywood is you know produced by new hollywood production and okay man it's 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 an amazing uh piece i can't wait for it to be released I, when I, when is it gonna be released do you know do you have a release date um, i don't know i don't know as of yet i know we just finalized some of the, some of the, the shooting okay and um, i know it's in you know uh they're getting it ready. I just don't know what when it's on air though, but I'm I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm also on another one called Bid for Love. Bid for Love is coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's the one you shot in Dallas, right? Yes. Yeah. In Dallas. Yeah. Um, got a lot of heavy hitters in that one as well. So I saw I'm that. Too, so. Yeah. You know, once I get some release dates, I'll definitely be posted. <laughs> posted. You know I'm a repost. You know I'm a hey listen. I'm all about supporting, man. So right. hit me in the DM on that one. Send it to me. <laughs> Make sure I see it because you know the algorithm is sometimes it ain't going to let you see everything. True. So, yeah, hit me in the DM or tag me or something so I can support for sure. I got you. Yeah. And, hey, we can't forget about Snitch, man. Wait, wait, I, I, waiting on Day to drop, what, season four, right? Season four. Season you know, four. so, but listen, y'all, we're castmates on... Amazon Prime series. It's a little short mini series called Snitch. Yep. Great production, great writing, great cinematography. Dejour yep. Ashwood. He's a director, producer, the writer, the actor. This man does it all. <laughs> Everything. All. all. I'm telling killing. you. Yes, yeah, killing it. Yeah, but it's it's really good, man. How do you feel about your role in that? I think you. I think you carried your weight in that, man. Like you got a good, you got a solid Taisha, role. Taisha, hey, Taisha, Taisha, Keisha, Taisha. That's his best friend. That you know, that's his best friend's name in real life too. Mm. Taisha. Yeah, he told me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to um play his best friend. I kept telling Deidre, I was like, hey, if you when you do the uh, the make a film, another film in a day, I was like, you better hit me up. He was like, I got you, I got you. I he got just you. posted today. I didn't even see it today. I gotta. I see. I gotta go on now. Then go on now. Yeah, he, he's posted today. Okay, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go on jump in there. Man, the quality of them joints be just. I know. Fire. I know. I gotta get back into it too. I might just go ahead and do it because I haven't done it since. I think I did the first two, and he's done how many since then? Yeah. <laughs> I see. I I, I be into them. So now I'm gonna go on there tonight and go do what I gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna do the same. So Dejour, we coming, we coming. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. Snitches is this dope, man. That's a dope series. Yeah, man. It's a dope series. I'm hoping he can get it on Netflix for real. And I know he said he was probably gonna extend it to like ten minutes. You know, ten minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he said it's a lot of work though, as far as like editing and all that stuff, and getting like actually just getting the film because you know for ten minutes you gotta film thirty, you know, so you could chop it up. Sure. Excuse sure. me and all that. Sure. So it's a grind. Yeah. He probably just got to build his team up, excuse me, build his yeah. team up a little bit, you know, so he can extend it a little bit. But yeah, man. Yeah. 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 I can't yeah. wait, though. I can't yeah. wait. He hit yeah. me up. Yeah. You were, you on season three, right? That yeah. That was your first time? Yeah. 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 
So yeah. I'm his I'm his I'm his childhood best friend coming back into the picture. So he told me uh he hit me up a little while ago and was like, Yeah man, season four, I'm gonna have something for you, so <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. To, to grow in the character. Season three, no. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah, it. Like, natural than a love, too. Thank natural. you. Thank you. See, thank you. I Listen, <laughs> I like to hear that sometimes. Thank you. Let's me know I'm still on my shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you could be confident in your shit all day, but, you know, you can want to hear some genuine feedback, you know? Right. So, yeah, that's right. cool. Thank you for that. So I can't wait to grow that character. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's good, man. So let's talk about your fashion. Fashion. Yeah. Let's talk about fashion, girl. You got some style on your ass. <laughs> 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 no, nah, for real, though. All jokes aside, I really love your sense of style. So when I saw that you had a fashion line, well, you got your hats. But I see that you, this is what I love about it. You got your hats, right? And then you package it up and show people, look, this is what you can wear with. Like, I think that's so dope. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 it just paints a whole visual for somebody. And be like, yeah, I want that. That yeah. will make somebody say, yeah, I want that. Because I see what you can do with it. And you yeah. you just lay it out for them. Like, so when I saw that, I was like, yeah, I, I wasn't surprised. You know what I mean? But yeah. how, did you, how did that all start? Did that come up? that come about because you're in love with fedoras and your style and what I mean, how, tell us about it girl tell us i've been love with hats since i was a kid like i i've always been in love with hats like all kind of hats ball caps fedoras like kangos like all all of that hoodies like i always like accessories yeah um, ever since i was a kid but just fashion has always been a part of my life i i remember you know, dressing up in my mom's clothes, you know, when when I was younger, she'd be like, stay your ass out of my closet. <laughs> like, hey, this is fly. But um, yeah, fashion for me was just like, uh, that that's one of my one of my loves too, you know. Um, acting of course and then and then fashion. Um, got into it, you know, grew up, you know, like I say, didn't grow up with a lot, but my mom used to take us to the thrift stores. Yeah. Man, to get all kind of stuff from the thrift stores. Man, I have bell bottoms in the basket. I have all kind of we we call them knickerbockers. The little fun <laughs> pants come past me. Yeah. You know, had all kind of stuff. But then I started like styling people. Um, especially when I came out here to Atlanta, I had the opportunity to uh, work with uh, a famous stylist, Felipe G. Okay. A style little Duval. Okay. Um, I had an opportunity to help style Tammy Roman for some things. Karen Civil. Oh, that's uh, dope. Who else? Uh, man, it's a bunch of people. Uh, Karan Joseph Riley, which is Terry J. Yeah, Bonner. yeah, I know, yeah. I know, um, yeah. So I've, I've had an opportunity to kind of, and people, everywhere I go, people are like, how do you put that together? Like, only you can put that together. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, okay, let me let me do something with this. But the Fedora line kind of started because everywhere I go, I do red carpet events as well. Okay. And hosting and things like that. So people, everywhere I go, I wear my hats and people are like, let me have a hat, you know, and, yeah. and I'm a person, so I found myself giving my hats away, oh, you know, wow. I'll leave without, you know, my hat, so I'm like, you know what, around, like, um, earlier this year, I said, you know what, I'm going to just start my fedora line with my new, by Nikki brand, Yes. and I just really stepped out on faith, I took some of my money, and I just ordered a bulk of, 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 of fedoras and i started just buying the materials to style them so every fedora that i have is handmade i actually sit and make those wow um, okay so not one hat is the same they may look the same but they're not the same so i didn't know it was gonna take off like that i ended up rocking one um when i went home to houston uh -huh. and i was like i'm gonna just rock it and i'm gonna put a price on it and i put it was 28 dollars uh -huh. I said, I'm going to just sell it for $28 and see. And man, my cash app started going off. Started going off. Wow. I, I tried to create the, the whole collage because some people say, well, I've never wore fedoras and I don't know how to wear them. I don't know what to wear with them. So I kind of give you that idea that, okay, you can rock, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. So I kind of yeah. give people that, that picture so they can say, hey, you know, and it, it's been a blessing, man. People have been buying them. I'm actually back ordered right now. That wow, for real? I'm 
That's dope. <laughs> I'm on back order, so I'm like, hey, I'm not taking no more money until these hats are in my home. Right. So right. So that's your personal collection right behind you. This is my personal collection. Yeah. Yeah, you better hold on to them. You back order, so hey, you can't. <laughs> You ain't gonna have nothing to promote. You keep giving them away. <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah, these, these, these are my personal collections here. Um, but any anyone on here that you see on the wall, you can definitely order and get. So. Oh my gosh. So how can how can someone order it from you? Um, my Instagram um is at Nuke by Nikki. You can hit okay. me up in my DM. I am actually I just registered and got on Shopify. Okay. So be able to purchase on Shopify. Um, of course, I'm an online uh, boutique, so I do mail out across everywhere. Okay. So I've been, I've been blessed to ship to L.A. and Hawaii and New York. And, you know, so everybody's kind of getting that niche of, of, of the new by Nikki Fedora. So I'm, I'm excited. Man, that's what's up. I, it's going to take off for you because they're dope. That, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, I love them. I got to get me one for real. You, for sure, for I, sure. Yeah, what about um until you get your Shopify, why don't you start a um an Instagram store? So my daughter was telling me about that. And yeah. I'm like, I've been looking into it. Um, I just wanted to I just got my licensing for my, my new brand. Okay. I literally just got that. Um I got my trademark coming as well. And so I've been getting the the back end of everything okay. yeah. settled. And then, but definitely launch is gonna be big, so I'm definitely looking into. That. I'll definitely look into that and see how I can set that yeah. up because a lot of people do shop on Instagram. And they oh yeah. And see that, so yeah. I bought a uh, I bought a bracelet off Instagram today. <laughs> what? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's a stone, a stone bracelet. I bought. I don't really shop on there, but I saw it and I was like, oh, y'all got it on sale today. I clicked it, and then I well, what I did was I clicked into it, right? I looked at it, and then I went and researched the company, and I looked at the reviews. Everything looked solid because, you know, somebody sometimes they'll sell you some fake stones. They just be colored little oh. fake beads, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I did my research, and everybody was like, yeah, they're solid, you know, good quality. It's the, good, it's the real okay. stones. So I was like, shit, give it to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and people. That's, I guess that's for me, I be kind of weary too, cause you know. Let me tell you, I bought some off of, of like Facebook. You know, they had them little. Mm. Man, I got that stuff, man. I was like, bro. I said the next, if I see somebody that remotely look like they work for this company, I'ma slap the shit out of them. Yeah. I was so mad. That thing looked like you know how um, when Denise made uh Theo that shirt <laughs> that Gordon the trail. <laughs> oh my god. Man, <laughs> it was a old jumpsuit. It was not at all. It was it was not at all. I don't know what kind of Oh my god. But see, was that a link that took you to an outside website? I don't know what it was. I just clicked on it and saw it. I was like, oh I gotta have this jumpsuit. Man, I got that. I couldn't fit one leg, and it was supposed to be a three X. I was that, like, bro. Oh, uh, you know why? That was that was um, Asian sizes that you bought. That was straight some Asian stuff that you bought. Yeah. So here's the thing with shop with uh, not Shopify, but with Instagram, it's actually an Instagram based platform that you're purchasing okay. it through. It's not it's not gonna take you to the website. You know, but I do understand you're trying to get your trademark in place and all that before you put that out there. Somebody come and take you, you know, I get that. So you, you're doing it the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, with it, yeah, I clicked into a site too. So that's why I went and I did my research. Mm-hmm. And I also, here's the thing too. Now, I don't know if, this here's a little tip that I always do, right? I don't know if you have a credit card or not, but if you have a credit card, when you make them online purchases, just use your credit card. Because if it comes and it's a piece of shit, you can always call the credit card and be like, listen, I got this item. It's not as described. They won't take it back. They're going to give you your money back. Oh, wow. Yeah, they're going to give you your money back. They'll okay. just they'll open up a dispute with the retailer and fight for you. And at, at that time, they'll take the charge off your card until they resolve it and settle it. But nine times out of ten, they're going to give you that credit. And they're going to close it out. Yeah, Gosh. yeah, because okay. yeah, because they're gonna say, oh. "Oh, well, did you reach out to the retailer?" And you can be like, "Yeah, but they're not trying to take it back. Can't get in touch with them or whatever." Because especially if it's some Asian stuff, dang, you ain't gonna take that back. 
So yeah, buy it with your credit card and then dispute it and just say, hey, I received it. It's not as described. I'm trying to get with the retail. They're not giving me a refund. Can you please dispute this and whatever? I'm telling you. Gotcha. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that. Yeah, man. That's how I move, man. I don't buy nothing online on my debit card. <laughs> and then, of course, with people stealing stuff, too, and taking your numbers, let them take that credit card because they're taking their money. They ain't taking your money because you ain't going to be responsible for it. But let them take some money out your bank. Then it's 10 to 15, 20 business days to get your money back. Like, that's come true. on. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So, that's I don't know how we got on money, but, yeah, that's just a little tip. <laughs> Yeah, for real. Speak through them. I didn't know that. I didn't know these vibes with my credit card. Because I use my credit card for gas. I'm like, I'm just using it for gas. And yeah. Pay that doing off. But yeah, that's dope. That's that's good. Yeah. Any online thing. And a lot of credit cards too will give you an extended um, return policy. So if they give you like a one year guarantee or whatever, the credit card will give you like another year. You just got to read into it. But yeah, a lot of them do that too. Okay. And while we on it, let me tell you another thing about credit cards. <laughs> Look into a credit card that will give you um, cell phone warranties if you pay your credit if you pay your cell phone bill with the card. So say like I got American Express, right? And mm -hmm. they give me up to eight hundred dollars per claim on my phone as long as I pay my phone bill with the card. So I don't have to pay my phone company or Apple for Apple Care or anything like that because I got my credit card. So it saves you money. You ain't got to pay nothing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Now that I didn't know. Yeah. Oh, and all I pay is like a $25 deductible. That's it. Dang. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of cards out there like that. Yeah. So, okay. So you said what? <laughs> you got that good, good credit. See, I got that capital one. Capital One, you know, anybody can get Capital One now. You have that Capital One Express, okay? No, okay. but listen, no, listen, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so here, okay, since we talking, we are gonna talk, right? Yes, I do have good credit, right? I do, but I and when you say American Express, I don't have, I don't want the regular American Express cards. What I have is the Delta Sky Miles American mm -hmm. Express card. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm telling you, man, I, I am the king of finesse, but the legit way. Mm -hmm. I will finesse these credit card companies for these Sky Miles. I don't pay for plane tickets. Wow. You understand me? I'm talking about whole family fly free. That's how much I finesse these cards and I work them. Like I work them to my benefit. So if I'm gonna get a credit card, you gotta be giving me something. I'm not just gonna give you my business for for nothing. Just for yeah. my credit. I can build my credit any other way. But right. I get these I get the Delta American Express card because I get so many miles and I pay everything on my card. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, just bills and just daily yeah. living and whatever yeah. on my card. And I build the miles up. So when it's time for the family to fly, we don't pay for no plane tickets. Yeah. Nothing. That's no. Nothing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And that's the, that's, 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 man, listen, that's the game though. Yeah. You gotta, gotta make it work. Like yeah. I do that. Um, like I said, I pay everything online with my card. I and and what 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 makes it work for me, what makes sense for me, is that I use my card and my cash is there. So if ever I just need cash and somebody ain't trying to take credit card or whatever, you just never know when you need cash, right? right. So now you ain't even touched your cash. Of course I pay it off. I do it in cycles. So it's like yeah. every time I get paid, I'll pay what I spent within them two weeks on that card. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's the cycle. But my money, I ain't touch my money. My money's sitting right there. But that yeah. money's gonna pay that in them two weeks. But then I ain't got paid again. You know what I'm saying? But so it's not. I don't live above my means either. I'm not. I'm not charging what I can't pay. You know right. what I'm saying? So everything right. that I would have paid cash anyway is on my card. But my money's there. So yeah. if anything right. dire were to happen, I still got my card and I got my money. I yeah. got a. I got. I got debt now because something. You know, something happened and I got a whatever. But I mean, that's. You know, that's just yeah. how I do it. So I don't know how we got on that, but yeah, <laughs> I told you we just talking. <laughs> we just talking. Yes, indeed. 
So what else you got coming up? What do you got coming up? You got any um any more bookings or what you doing? You working on your hat um, line? Man, I got what do, what I got? All the stuff for the filming that I, it's, it's crazy because I filmed a lot during COVID and stuff. Mm -hmm, I um, saw you. I got my launch for for new by Nikki, my brand. Um, I'm doing a launch here in Atlanta, and I'm also doing one in Houston, my hometown. Um, so. Early November, I'm gonna do the launch. Okay. Um, and yeah, just getting my daughter situated. One of my daughters, you know, she's looking at to going to Korea for college. Oh wow. Okay. And yeah. So you know, I had two high school graduates. Yeah. Congrats on that. I saw that on the ground. I saw you post them on the ground. They graduated. Yeah. Cool. Kudos Thank to you, man. That's hey. Thank you. That's an accomplishment for yourself, raising them, man, and, and you know, and going after your dreams and all that. Like, yeah. they they weren't young, so you got up, came to Atlanta, did you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, you don't that people don't know that part of the story. Like, yeah, that's, no, that's a whole no. different dynamic. So, the 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 grind is, yeah, that's man, true. keep going, yeah. keep doing your thing, keep going, keep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But I'm super excited, man. It's, I got a lot of stuff in the works, man. Um, just got, you know, hey, I got, I got a call this week, you know, auditioning for, for some major. So hey. I'm like, hey, let's book it. Exactly. <laughs> Get in front of that camera and put the work in. That's it. So you, def it. you definitely got it, man. You definitely solid, grounded. Like thank you. Natural, you know what I'm saying? So just keep going, man. It's only a matter of time. You know, yeah. it's only a matter of time. You just gotta get the reps. That's all it is. There's reps, man, and the people seeing you mm -hmm. and getting to work and just doing what you do with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's yeah. It. And work for yourself. I tell any any actor, you know, actors, work for yourself, but have your team but still grind for you. You yeah. know. Um I submit for myself, even on actors access, yep. I'll submit. Yep. You know. All the time, if I, if I get up in the morning, that's one of the first things I do is check actors' access. I check, you know, midday. I check, yep. you know, and I have my agents, you know, and it's okay. You can have multiple agents if your agency uh, allows you to, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. um, I have two agents. My agent in New Orleans, he works for me. Like, he's, I love him. I've been with him for four years. I also okay. have a talent manager, and she works for me as well. So. See, there it is. Like, we're okay. talking. Yeah, like we're talking. But we yeah. definitely got to get up because, you know, yeah, I, you, I need to, <laughs> you need a, you, you need my agent. <laughs> talk to me now, talk like, to me. You need, you need my, I need to say, yeah, you need my agent. We got to talk online. <laughs> we'll talk, hit me in the DM. Yeah, send me your number. We'll, we'll, we'll keep in touch that way and talk. And, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, because I'm telling you, man, I, 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 I've been saying that, and, it, and it's on me, though. You know, that's on me, because it's like, shame on me if I stay there and continue to, if yeah. that's it. And I, I try to rationalize. And honestly, though, like I told you, I've been on my little hiatus, so I ain't really giving it any thought. Yeah. But as we're talking, I'm yeah, it's coming back to me. Like, yeah, why the hell I ain't going out for... <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a little strange, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, but, ask them for that submission list. <laughs> Like, and I was like, I called him. I was like, wait a minute. He ended up calling me the same day and was like, I was, I've been submitting you. He was like, I need some, you know. Um, Walking Dead is starting back up, so oh okay. They asking for that now. So he was like, I'm trying to submit you to the Walking Dead. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, shoot, get this good headshot. Here you go. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, let's but talk. Yeah. For sure, let's talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 Might might need to shuffle some things around. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I got you. I appreciate you. Hey, I got another idea. Hold on. It just hit me. And I've told several people this, and you might not do it either. But I'm going to tell you anyway. Right? Okay. Have you ever thought about, once you once you launch, selling on Groupon? I think for a new brand and a new business, that can be like a pivotal pivotal situation for you because think about it when you go on groupon do you go on groupon looking for brands or looking for shit that you like and deals deals 
like and live. Exactly. Why not put your stuff on Groupon? It's not going to water down or dilute your brand because nobody what? knows you right now. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You're trying to get your name out there. But if you sell yeah. somebody some quality, what are they going to do? Yo, yeah. where you get that hat from? Shit, I got this on Groupon. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. why not put it on Groupon, do a discounted rate, whatever. I don't know. You can come up with that. But I'm just saying, I think, you know how many people are on Groupon every day? Yeah. yeah. Think I about that, never though. Thought about that. I never thought about that. Bro. Think about it. You don't worry about brands. You don't think to go, oh, I'm going to go on Groupon and buy me some Nikes or some this or that. You don't worry about a brand. You just go on Groupon, you're sifting through, and you see something you like and be like, oh, and if it looks of quality and a good deal, you might buy it, right? Yeah. I'm just what? I'm just throwing that out there. I've told What's several people. Because I called it. <laughs> 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 That's it. Okay, because I know I go on Groupon. I'll be on Groupon. Shoot. Get I'm tickets saying. And, and all kind of stuff. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. saying. And if you see something you like, it's a good deal. There's plenty yeah. of people going to buy it. Plenty of people don't worry about brands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if they can yeah. find a gym and be like, oh, shit. Like a hat. Come on, man. How many people are really looking for a name brand hat anyway? They're looking for fashion sense, right? Yeah. So they see yeah. that and be like, nuke yeah. my Nikki. Look at this hat. Oh, you get one and get another half off or whatever. Man, yeah. come on now. Yeah. That's what's up, I'm, man. I'm just, I'm just, I'm hey, just don't. I'm I'm throwing it out there. I it. Ain't, ain't nobody That's caught cool. it yet. Ain't nobody caught it yet. I'm telling you. Listen, night. go on the homepage, and I think it's at the bottom. It'll say sell on Groupon. Just okay. that simple. Last time I checked, which was a couple years ago, they were like, oh, we're closed for um, applications right now to the top of the year. And I think that the top of the year was going to be 2020, I think. I think okay. it was. But yeah, just check it out. Okay, I wait. I appreciate that. That might be a gem. That might be a gem. That was definitely a gem. <laughs> I about to research that more. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you now. Hey, listen, in closing, I like to do this from time to time. I like to do self-analysis. What's one thing that you can think of right now on the spot that you could do better to catapult yourself even further than where you've gone? Grind harder. Expound on that. What? What can no, you do? No, no excuses. And what I what I mean by that, sometimes we get we get distracted by life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and we let people not not just life, but circumstances and people. We let that kind of throw us off. Yep. Um, but just staying focused. Yeah. Stay focused. It's so easy to be, be distracted by things that are thrown our way, but. At the end of the day, no, I was, I was I was talking to somebody earlier. Do something each day that's going to prog progress your career. I don't yeah. care if it's, you know, five minutes, 10 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes, you know, do so. I do something each day that whether it be my acting, whether it be my hats. Typically, when I get home, if I got a long day, I'm still going to make a hat when yeah. I get home. Yeah. I'm still gonna make one hat when I get home. If not, I'll make you know five or six hats in one day. But if I made one, I got closer to my goal. Exactly. You know I submitted to my my own self to something on Actors Access or enrolled in a in an acting class or even watched somebody who inspired who inspires me. You know what I'm saying to kind of do better or just study something. Yeah. Hang into my craft, man. It's it's all about focus and grind, and it's, it's just yeah, that's what it is. Yes, indeed. What's what's been one highlight that sticks out in your mind thus far in your acting career? And we are gonna wrap it up on that. Man, my a highlight. What's a highlight? Yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta highlight. Some people are not. Some people are so so engulfed in the grind, they're like, ah, I'm still grinding. I can't think about that. No, damn it. Celebrate your accomplishments. What's been the highlight? Of your, your your journey. One highlight I, I'll leave off on is having someone that I grew up watching, and my parents grew up, my my mom grew up watching, and my grandparents. Man, I had Lou Gossett Jr. tell me I was good enough. Oh man! 
And that just, man, that stuck with me. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Lou. Lou, gossip? You got it, pretty toes. You got it. I said, okay. <laughs> Let me cover my feet real quick, but okay. <laughs> God dang creep. <laughs> oh. oh God dang Lou got some. Oh man. <laughs> Lou is a feet man. <laughs> you got it pretty toes. Oh, <laughs> damn, Lou. <laughs> oh, wow. I needed that. <laughs> I needed that one. Oh, hell. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, oh, yeah, we're going to end on that note. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you for having me. Oh. Man, was, this was cool. Ah, oh, yeah, man. I love this. This was a good one. This is, I had a good time. <laughs> I thoroughly enjoyed myself. <laughs> I appreciate you lending your time and your experiences with the audience, with myself. Uh, thank you for coming to kick it. I told you it's going to kick it, girl. Kicked it. We kicked sure. it. We damn sure kicked it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, man. But listen, I wish, not wish, I pray for many, many more blessings to come your way, which they will, you know, in all aspects of life. I feel your energy is good. Good energy. Love it. All that. So, I'm happy that you um, were moved by the prayer, too. I'm happy that it did something for you. So. Thank you. Keep that up, man. Oh, I will. I will. You keep it up, too. Keep praying. Yeah, you... Don't feel I... no type of way about the religion part. Get that spirituality in check and just go for it, man. I'm telling yeah. you. Watch, watch, watch. Look. We're going to talk. Yeah. We're going to talk. For sure. We're going to talk. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yes, indeed. Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for tuning in. This one has been a real one. Uh, man, we've been on here for almost about an hour and a half. That's that's a beautiful thing. Didn't even feel like it. But listen, everybody, I thank you guys for sticking with us. I thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, we got Bill J in the comments. Have my homeboy Manasa in the comments. They've been sticking with us. They've been riding with us the whole night. We appreciate you guys and everybody else who's checking this on the live, checking this on the replay. Hey, can't do it without you. I do it for you every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Kicking it with your boy, Cool Car. Never know who I might have, so stick around. All right? Until next time, thank you, Nicole Crump, for coming on here. Y'all make sure you check her out. Hey, it's actress Nicole Crump on Instagram. Check her movie out. She's Sexy on Tubi, streaming right now. And Tubi's free, damn it. So I don't want no excuses. Tubi's free. <laughs> and I got all of her links in the description as well. So y'all make sure y'all check her out and just watch her do a thing on her journey, y'all. Until next time, peace and love. And we out of here. Yes, indeed. Yes, Lord.